Alright guys, welcome to the hardware tour of the Sony Xperia Z. I'm going to go around the device, uh, make a few comments, you know, based on my own experience and also the experience of other few users who have been utilizing the phone. Alright, so it's a very good looking device as I mentioned in my unboxing. I mean, depending on who's looking, you know, a device is appearance is a very subjective affair but to me one of the reasons I bought this was because I thought it was a really well done device by Sony very exquisite very slim and the fact that they managed to make this kind of a design still waterproof and dustproof really speaks wonders to Sony's engineers and and their design in general alright so you have the big 5 inch screen on front now there are no capacitative Sorry, there are no hardware buttons on here that are capacitative, such as a Samsung or whatever. So, of course, some of the real estate, when you use a phone, you'll see it's kind of a bit lost, but those get out of the way when in certain applications that don't need them, the software buttons, that is. Alright, so, at the front, we have the front-facing camera, and we have the, 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 the actually a, small, a very small LED over here, you can't see it now, and the usual proximity sensors at the top. All right, and the earphone grill here. Now at the bottom we have the microphone. Then going further to the bottom we have an, a, a lanyard hole right here. Not many manufacturers still do this, but Sony still manages to still put it on their device right here. Then you have barcode information. Of course, it's an all glass design. You know, they had to put, the, put it somewhere on, and also the fact that it's, the back isn't replaceable or the battery cannot be removed rather. All that information would usually be on the internal of the phone underneath the battery, but Sony had to put it somewhere. So as you'll see on the back, there'll be more markings as well. So on the bottom, nothing much besides the barcode information with your IMEI and other such data. Alright, on the left, we have... Well, it's almost bare, nothing to press rather. You have the dock pins right here. As I indicated, I did get a dock and it's been really good. It saved me from always having to open at least one of the flaps here if I don't have to, except if I'm going to be doing a data transfer. So let's get on to the flaps. There are actually two flaps over here. One here is for the micro SD, which is a very good plus. Some high-end phones are still not putting micro SD slots on here so Sony did a good job in adding this for those power users who require a whole lot more space than the regular 16 or 32 gigabytes internal memory so let's open this doesn't require a lot as you can see I don't as you can see I don't have long fingernails but that was relatively easy to open right uh, so some may say it's a bit fiddly but I think it's a good trade-off I mean, they had to do it to get the phone waterproof. How else was it going to work? But it, it, it doesn't feel flimsy to me at all. It's really streamlined once closed and it gives the phone that overall look of elegance that I mentioned. Now, above the micro SD slot is where you find the charging port or the USB, the micro USB port as well. Alright, same kind of affair. You pull it, comes up with a white little, a white little, and you just put it back in. And that's that. And for those who don't wish to utilize this port very often, if you, if you, if, even if you use the dock, you wonder, but I still have to transfer data to the computer. You can probably, I mean, for those who want to do other methods of transfer, it's still available, whether Wi-Fi, upload, or Bluetooth, etc. Alright, let's go to the left. Now, the left is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. We have the very, very well-designed, I'm going to just zoom in on this, very well, well-designed power button. Some... Let me just get it a bit. Okay, it's focused now. Some may think it's kind of. Uh, just trying to get it focused. Zoom back out a little bit. All right, that's fine. Right, very nice to done power button. Some may think it's kind. It kind of throws the whole design off, but I think it's pretty great. Very different. Uh, not something we've seen from many manufacturers. The volume button is here. It has pretty good tactile feedback really easy to press right and right here we have the speaker I'll get into this in a little bit I'm gonna give you an overview of the hardware then I'm gonna give you my my comments in general thereafter uh, now right here we have the sim card tray 
also once again very easy to open now this was a little difficult to figure out at first but you just you know plug this tray out put your micro sim in and you're good to go now as we go to the I'm gonna go to the top only thing at the top you find is where you put your your headset all right now let's take it to the back of the phone where we have the 13 megapixel XMR S2 or version 2 whatever they call it and the very very weak LED flash then right here is also another cancelling microphone noise cancelling microphone and then right here you see a tag this is an NFC tag it really helps you to, helps you find out where exactly because the spot here is a very small spot and you know NFC is something that most of these manufacturers are pushing now I don't really find it as useful I've used it once before on my Galaxy S3 but the whole idea of having to line up your device and is really kind of tacky but you know they think it's something big but not all versions of the Xperia Z have, has this tag there but mine does all right and then you have the Xperia branding here and more of those write-ups that I told you about before so overall a very well made handset now it's very easy to press the power button once you hold it normally for those with you know decent sized hands for persons with smaller hands they may find it a challenge to do a bit reaching up and down the phone sometimes now I'm gonna get to the very first as you see as I hold it naturally here my hand right here covers the speaker that's one of the first faults I find I was hoping that Sony would have put the speaker at least somewhere at the top here where you're not covering it but normally if you're listening to anything playing games and you have it one-handed your hand is going to cover the microphone sorry the speakerphone here and that's a big that's the first minus I have on the on the design so overall it looks very good feels quality premium worth the money unlike some of the galaxy series so where it lacks probably in the internal specs it makes up in the design but I must take points off for the very poorly placed speaker the next aspect of the design that I don't like of course which is a trade-off as again with the with the tempered glass at back and at front you're gonna find it's a fingerprint magnet I mean it's easy enough to wipe off with a a microfiber cloth but just to note it really takes away a little bit from the elegance of it but the white version for those who prefer doesn't show fingerprints as much but I generally thought the black looked more premium but I do have some accessories coming that will help me to kind of you know keep that away a bit alright so this is generally what I have to say about the hardware no it's it's a bit it's, it's boxy as you can see so some may find the sharp edges not to their liking they may prefer a more curved device um, um, that's not as as angular as this but it's not been a real issue for me it's a very 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 nice well I can't get it to, it actually does get to stand on the side because of the shape but I'm on a I'm not on a very flat surface here so you won't see it but overall very well designed from Sony I oh let's comment again on the hardware before I go the back of the phone gets pretty warm when you're doing heavy tasks such as playing certain games um, utilizing multimedia I'm not sure what it is but um, it does get a bit warm at the back just a note on the light usage and regular stuff texting SMS in and you know well texting SMS in same thing but when you're doing light activities you won't necessarily feel that warm up but in heavy usage you certainly will so I had to mention that as another minus for the hardware I don't know probably also has to do with the tempered glass and not being able to absorb that heat as much or the internals as well can't really say so overall very good device very well designed device but points have to be taken off for the bad placement of the speaker and the warmth of the back of the de of the device as well now in my next clip I'm gonna get into the software of the device so I'll see you on the next side of that.
Hi guys, welcome to the software walkthrough segment of my review of the Sony Xperia Z. This is a wrap up section where I'm going to just give you my thoughts on what the internals of the phone are like. I just concluded talking about the hardware. Now I'm going to give you a software tour from boot up. Alright, I must say part of my background, things have changed a bit since I did the first clip. And, and there's a little bit of background noise this time, so pardon that as I go on. So I'm going to start by pouring up, hold it, give it a vibrate so it's now in the process of boot up. First thing you see of course is the Sony logo, followed by the Xperia branding and a nice cool animation. Alright, so as, so as not to cause a lot of distraction while I'm doing the software walkthrough, I'm going to actually disable my data service so that many apps aren't being run in the background. So here is the lock screen. I have the default theme enabled. I will change a few themes and show you what it's like. So this is the default Sony Xperia lock screen. You have on your left, you have your music control. And on the right, it takes you to the camera. And then you can swipe up and down in this nice motion. Hope it's being zoomed in. Hope you can see it well. And um, so it gives a nice little blind effect. And you have your date and time. Let me just go back to that. There you go. Shows you your notification at the top, your, your cellular provider if you have any alarms enabled. You can in fact interact with the interact with the notification bar when you from the lock screen. Let me just turn these off. Alright. So I think some I think one review online had said you cannot interact with the notification area, but I am fully able to swipe down from the lock screen. And um, of course, interact with the settings and the four toggles that Sony has on here. All right, so notifications come up. I just got a message here. Comes in, shows you the number of messages in that thread. All right, so swipe up to go. This is my default page. I have currently enabled uh, six different pages. You can add a total of seven to add your usual set of a set of themes or uh, widgets and shortcuts to, to your applications on here. Alright, so my default one here is Sony does folders a bit differently. While Sony software is, the, is one of the closest you'll find in Android to stock Android because HTC and Samsung are a bit more heavily themed than Sony but Sony sticks closer to the Android that a lot of Android purists really love and appreciate. So they do folders a bit differently. You press an off folder and there goes your apps. In the, in the stock Android, you get rounded folders and it, and it kind of pops out a bit differently than Sony does. All right. So I'm gonna show you, Sony has on default this AccuWeather theme here, which when you press it, it comes down and shows you the daytime, nighttime, and a few days of information regarding your weather. As you see down here, Sony has on-screen co navigation controls. There are no capacitive buttons anywhere to be found on the device. And these disappear uh, depending on the application that you're using. So I have messages now, so it shows me the, uh, the amount of messages I have right here. Next to that I have the Chrome browser. It must be noted that Chrome is the default browser that Sony has chosen to go with. The stock Android browser is no is not in here. If you're not a fan of Chrome, you have to download your own, of course. I have my phone book, my dial screen. Let me just show you the dial screen while I'm here. Oh, that comes up. White. Your contacts are here. You can press the arrow to do to interact with it differently. Call, send a message, view the contact, delete it from your log, and it shows you details of the call, when it was made, and the duration of the call. Go back, or I could have alternatively gone up here and press back as well. Shows you your phone book, your favorites and your groups if you have any. Now since Sony has gone the, the stock Android way you can always scroll up from the, the home the, the home pane right here and it takes you to Google Now which is Google's search service. So you go up, Google comes up. If, you, if, if I was online 
then it will show me my data. I'm going to just go back online and show you how it works when I'm actually connected. It shows you the cards that Google has enabled for my location and you can always hear your voice search from here. Okay, messages and missed calls keep coming in. Hopefully nothing else disturbs this video. Alright, let's do the... Alright, let's forget about the Google Now experience for a little bit. That's really not that important. But you get the idea, guys. Alright, so Sony has their own apps on here. The Walkman app, the album, the movies, and the Sony Select. This one really and truly just takes you to some... It's, it's almost like a customized Sony Sony app store where you can go and select certain Sony Sony uh, Sony esque kind of applications. The Walkman app is is a very nice Walkman player. This is how it looks on default. Playing now takes you to your music. As you can see, the last artist I was playing was Tupac, so it has him here in the background. You can always press on the infinity icon here that takes you to that gives you the option to find the music video on YouTube, get more at the Play Now store, search for the Google, search in Google. You can now the view lyrics and the share playing song are two additional um, additional things I added on. These are not in there by default, but the view lyrics really does work once you have an internet connection. You can also use Sony's built-in track ID application if you listen to a song and you want to find out more or that kind of thing. It, comp it, it competes a little well with Soundhound but it doesn't allow you to record or actually while Soundhound can listen to someone actually singing and tell you what song you're, you're singing the track ID only seems to work with recorded media that's being streamed from your computer or radio etc. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and play. One thing though I must say as well, I spoke about the poor placement of the speaker previously and the sound is not very great on here and I'm not sure if it was a compromise because of the waterproofing of the device but the sound is not very loud when, especially now I'm in a kind of a noisy environment, I'm sure it's not going to be that great. But let's just go. And Sony has some real, it's, okay the sound does get a bit better when you put the headphones, the, 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 the earphones in and there are quite a bit of customizations you can do here. So it has this clear audio, unique sound setting that automatically gives more clarity to the sound. It actually does work. Now you can have sound enhancements and clear audio enabled together. So when I uncheck that, I can go into sound enhancements and um, you can do, do your equalizer setting. I have it on bass boost right now, it has clear bass setting down here as well. Alright, it also has very cool visualization. So I go to the visualizer here and it starts to play a visualization that is on default. If you want to see the information on the song you're playing, just press this arrow back and it shows you something like that. It also works in landscape mode as well. You can have that go right there. There are quite a few you can choose in the background and as you can see, it interacts with my touch. Alright, let me change another thing to animal. Alright, so you can go to your music and as you can see, Tupac comes up right there in a better picture when it is in landscape mode. So I can go to my artist and he just go to album, scroll through your albums like that. Very very nice neat looking music app from Sony, I give them thumbs up for that one. You can search your music by going here, pretty easy. Even is attached to Facebook as you can see here with your friends music and any updates available. Alright. Okay, let's stop that now and go into the other application which is the album. 
which is a very well done gallery application upgrade from the standard one on, the, on Android. As you go in, it shows you your pictures, shows you a very large thumbnail and all the other ones in a, in, in, and you can always pinch. When I pinch it in like that, as you see, it, it moves very quickly. It's not very laggy in here at all. And it takes you to some very tiny thumbnails to give you an overview of more pictures in here. Scroll. And you can pinch. And you can also just zoom, go like that. And as you can see, it makes the, makes the image much, much bigger and easier to scroll. Now you can always go into go into my album and that will show you it actually is connected to my Facebook right now so I can go into my Facebook album and see them all of course you have to be online to have all the images downloaded in each album but it's pretty nifty that I can do that from here and my Picasso from my Google as well now you can do a sense me slideshow you can also do a media server where you can play what's on here on a device Alright, so the Sense Me slideshow, you can choose your default music and the, how you want the theme to zoom or spin and flip, 3D frames, etc. Works pretty cool and it also has background music as well. So you can choose a default track or you can choose a track from your music selection. So let me just try a default and see how that works. And I really don't, don't use this much at all. Right, so this is some of the default pictures that came on the phone here. You can mute the sound if you want to as well. It also has face detection enabled. I'm not sure how useful that is in, an, in a slideshow, but it, hey, it's there. Alright, that's the album application. Now into the movies. Movies is also similarly laid out. It shows you a preview of the video. As you can see, I have RDX in the background here. It shows you a preview of the video played last. And it gives you your category that you can go into on your device. If you can stream this, if you go here, you can throw. When you throw things, it's basically connecting it to other devices within reach, such as Bluetooth enabled or Wi Fi devices. And it's pretty cool. So I'll show you how, how this video moves. Alright, that's pretty much the video. It plays a lot of codecs. I think that I think there are probably only two codecs so far that I've seen in reviews that, that it doesn't handle out of the box, but you can always get an application for that. But otherwise it handles a lot of video formats really well. Alright, those are the main Sony applications I'd like to show you. Now I'm going to bring you into how the themes can change and the wallpaper. This is a, while I'm here, this is a little gallery app that Sony has. Many app, many manufacturers have it. nothing really that, that special, but still pretty cool that you can have that anyway. And this here is a toggle that Sony has where you press it and it takes you to, into some expanded settings that you'd like to use. Unlike some manufacturers where they have the all the toggles up here you can like samsung has it where you could scroll left and right sony doesn't have them all there but i think with jellybean 4.2 android google android google has changed that so you'll get all your notification options from there anyway all right so in here we have wi-fi bluetooth backlight data service sound gps airplane mode roaming hotspot and nfc So you go into your application settings by going here, or rather your app drawer by pressing here. You can automatically arrange them in own order, alphabetical, most used and recently installed. You can search your apps if you have, a, if you have tons of apps like I do on here. You can search here if you want to. You can also enable the uninstall option by going to three, into those three little dots, uninstall, you can share and you can customize. Alright, so this is pretty much it. It doesn't take you back to the last page the, the last page you views. So for instance, I am right here on the second to last pane. If I press home, 
and I go back in, takes me to the beginning because it's in alphabetical order. I'm assuming. I don't know if it will be any different. Let's try if I do recently install. If it, if it makes a difference, I really doubt that. But I'm on the second pane now. I go back to home. Sorry. And it takes me to the first. So it doesn't take you back to the recent if you page, which may or may not be an issue to some people. Alright, so let me take you into the settings option. Sony has some unique settings that other manufacturers don't in there. You have the typical Android, Wi Fi, Bluetooth, data, usage, more, etc. Call settings. Alright, Carnival is really coming down my road, so you can hear it. I'm trying to see how best I can compete with, with that. Sony has in here power management, which is where you have the stamina mode. Stamina mode essentially, once a once you turn the screen off, it turns off all data enabled applications to save your battery life. It really works well. You can also add applications to your whitelist that you want to actually run in the background while this feature is turned on. It should help your battery life and I've seen where it does actually have some use. So, so kudos to Sony for that. You have low battery mode, location based Wi-Fi where if you're in a low, it, it will detect when you're in a Wi-Fi zone and turn it on as opposed to having the Wi-Fi on all the time. I don't know how they really get that to work, but hey, it works. Alright, uh, oh, Sony also has their own backup and reset, backup and restore application here. You can choose where to backup your data, what you want to backup. Very cool, not many back um, users are get this privilege on other manufacturers devices so big ups to Sony for that and I'm going to show you how we change the theme you hold any area any free area it comes out like this you see all your pages that you have enabled right now you can go into widgets and you press widgets it comes up like this press back apps same effect then wallpapers very nice wallpapers on here might I add really shows the, shows the quality of the screen you press it, it gives you the preview and you press back to it to kind of confirm it alright, then you press here hold again, you can change the theme so it has a, it has a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 basically what the themes are, they give you, it gives you a new lock screen wallpaper different color schemes right now you see I have the blue highlights so if I go to the the amethyst everything goes kind of purplish go back out applying theme all my highlights are now purple and the wall the wallpaper is now different oh, hold on. right so there you get the different wallpaper all together all right so, so I'm gonna show you the camera application now the first issue I will talk about, with, as you can see, took a while right there for the, the camera app to come up. That's generally one of the only areas where I have an issue or people have noted in their own reviews. And we're hoping that Sony will fix this in a general firmware upgrade as it takes just a few extra seconds for you to load the camera application. You get a preview of your pictures here, this, the, the, the button to take the actual still picture. You have the video record button and you can also change which camera you're using whether it's a 2 megapixel HD camera or the 30 megapixel at the back it's now in in super auto mode with in superior auto mode this mode actually works pretty well in choosing the setting for you automatically and it is recommended for most users normal mode if you want to do a bit of tweaking in this mode you can enable HDR as well you have burst mode which works pretty well video camera picture effect sweep panorama scene selection, front camera, front video. All right, so Superior Auto doesn't give you many controls besides turning the flash on and off. And you can go into settings here to choose the resolution, flash, smile shutter. The smile shutter actually works and it has an option for different size of smiles, small smile, big smile, average smile. Quick launch shows you how to, what happens when you actually launch it from the lock screen. You can auto upload your picture. You can actually disable the shutter sound without having to silence the phone entirely. Not all manufacturers allow you to do that. 
choose your data storage mode and whether you want to have touch capture enabled and you can geotag your pictures as well. So it has taken some cues from the Sony brand of cameras and uh, it's a pretty good layout. Now the images taken from this phone, I'm not entirely convinced that it is, it, it is miles ahead of all the other manufacturers, especially coming from the Galaxy S3. I'm not seeing the image quality being uh, that different, but I will post some samples for you to see as well. All right, so that's the camera application. There is something else I want to show you guys. So some people, okay, now Sony has the, here the multitasking paint shows everything I just opened up. Unfortunately you cannot close all the apps at once, you have to swipe each one of them. That may or may not annoy some people, right? But what you can do in here is you can use some small apps that Sony has enabled. Similar to how Samsung has some of their floating apps on their note devices, you can launch a small calculator do that do that do that you cannot launch more than one at a time it will simply replace the one you had before but you can launch it and move on and do other things at the same time which is the point of it all so very good addition and you can also download a few more I believe from the Play Now store by going here and it takes you to either if you have them on your on your on your system already or you can go to the Play Store so those are Sony little small apps and they work pretty well. I just wish the app drawer had the ability to close all the apps you had running. Now I'm gonna do a couple games on here that person wanted to see. And as you can see, I had several applications loaded a while ago and the phone wasn't really slowing down that much either. All right, I don't really play a lot of games at all, but let me see if I can load up. Well, Temple, Temple Run is a fun game that some people like, I guess. Alright guys, I suck really bad so really don't <laughs> just showing you some of the quality on here. I'm already been beaten. Alright, so let's go back to home and load up another game. I'm keeping that one in the keeping that one loaded in the background just to show you how how well it multitasks. Okay, well I can't do Shadowgun because Shadowgun actually wants some additional data to be downloaded. So I'll just let that one be for now. Well this Batman game is really heavy. This is a one this was a 1.8 gigabyte file when I downloaded it. It's a very detailed game as well. It takes a while to get to the point, but... Now somehow I, I found that this game wasn't running as well as I think it should have. I'm not sure if it's really optimized for this device, but... There were some places where it was dragging a bit, but, but I, I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the phone really or whether the app is really optimized, but as you can see right now, I'm not even sure what's going on. It takes a, it takes a while to get going in this particular game. Uh, nothing is going on here. Alright, so I'll just get out of that going to something else. Alright, 
Sony has their Xperia Link application on here. Connect to the internet from your tablet PC using the network of your phone, which some of us can already do on some other devices. Sony's apps Video Unlimited and Music Unlimited are on here. And some of these can actually be removed. As you can see, you can uninstall the Video Unlimited if, if you don't want to. Actually, I don't even need that on here, so I'll, I'll take it off right now. You can also take the Play Memories online. I don't need that on the Play now. The, the, the PlayStation Mobile, that's quite a bit of the Sony stuff can be removed. So, so that's pretty good uh, that it's not frozen on your phone forever if you don't need it. Alright. So this is really it guys, this, the Sony Xperia Z software walkthrough. Hopefully I didn't miss anything that you guys wanted to see, but you can leave your questions and I'll answer as best as I can. Oh, and you also have the option to do a screenshot by holding the power button. And you, you can take a screenshot, going to, air, going to airplane mode, power off, and change the sound profile, whether it's going to be sound vibrate or no sound at all. And the screenshot works pretty well. You don't have to get an additional application for that. Alright, Sony does not bring on here a torch application, so I have to download one myself. The, the LED is not, not very bright, but you know it works in some situations, as you may find it necessary. So generally pretty responsive except for that camera application uh, which can easily be fixed by Sony in a firmware update. Okay this has been Techno Boy's Sony Xperia Z software walkthrough. Thank you for watching. Please comment, rate and feedback.